Hello, uh, Simon Bird here, uh, doing my vlog about uh, directing Days of the Bagnard Summer. Uh, so there's a few things I wanted to talk about today. Simon. Um, Sorry. Are you, are you doing a vlog? Trying to, mate. Can I be in it? If you must. Hello! So, it's currently nine o'clock on Saturday. I've got my trusty satchel over here. And it's time to get packing for the filming tomorrow. The key to packing for a filming date is only to pack the essentials. So, I've got my notebook, I've got my pen, got my wallet, phone, iPod, book that I'm currently reading, spare book in case I finish that book, another spare book in case I finish that one, breakfast bar in case I get hungry, maybe just a little decoration for my trailer there, cold tablets, cold tablets, cold tablets, cold tablets, cold tablets. Okay, I might have overdone it a bit. When Simon Bird approached me to be in his film Days of the Bagnod Summer, I, like most people, was impressed with the intelligent and sensitive writing, the compelling characters, and the great humour. And I was privileged to be in just one scene. But what I later came to discover was that this one scene is in fact perhaps the most important scene in the film. In fact it may even be the most important scene in the whole of cinema history. This is the most significant moment in film history since the watermelon scene in Buckaroo Bonsai in the fifth dimension. And that is not something I say lightly. You see in this scene, this one scene, our protagonist, Daniel Bagnold, he is going to hand his CV out to the general working world in order to find a job for the summer. He is pressured to do this by his mother, who he is estranged from. And in this one scene, we can see a microcosm for this whole drama playing out. He walks in, he is lost, he is unsure of himself. He is perhaps starting to question some of the inner motivations of his character. And he walks in to this burger shop and he hands over his CV and the teen server, utterly apathetic to the entire situation, he says, anything else? Anything else? Just dismisses the whole situation out of hand. And so Daniel, being perhaps hungry, he orders a cheeseburger, food, sustenance, the essential quality of life. And then the teen server, he says this line, and I shall never forget this line. He says, would you like to go large for 60p? Now this line, this line has stuck with me for, for weeks now. It has been replaying over and over in my head, like I could dream, like, like a half-remembered melody. Would you like to go large for 60p? So much is encapsulated in this one statement that I, I truly am astounded. Oh God, that's horrible. Gah, tastes like rubbing alcohol. morning everyone so it's uh, 5 17 currently just going to uh, get uh, my tea down my throat as well as uh, my patented breakfast bar except it's not mine at all it's actually another company's but whatever it's, it's irrelevant man. so I couldn't get to sleep last night not for ages and ages um, and it was just because my head was replaying every possible scenario for today, just on a loop. Because 
<laughs> I'm going to be in a film directed by Simon Bird. This is this is incredible. I'm 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 I'm, I'm always, I was always I was always, I've always been a fan of Simon Bird ever since I first saw the In Betweeners, and and now I'm working with him. Wow. Is my eye a bit wonky? I'll put my glasses on. This light rig up is so, so flattering. 6.29. I'm ready. Let's go. The sat-nav's talking in German. What the hell? So I have been spending now the best part of 10 minutes just trying to find my pickup. Um, this station is massive and confusing and I hate it with every fibre of my being. It's my new least favourite place. Uh, yeah, this is... I mean, I don't, I don't know where I'm supposed to be going. This is weird. So half an hour later, turns out we're actually at different stations. And now we play the long game of just, just sitting here waiting. I'm getting hungry. What is this in my bag? Ah! Oh, a breakfast bar! Golly gee willikers, it's like I planned for this! So, picked up. Now, on to set, immediately. This train has no brakes. So this boy, he says, would you like to go large for 60p? 60p money. Now perhaps we can read something into this. Would you like to go large for 60p? The gateway in order to attain a larger pool of sustenance. The very essential quality that keeps life propelled is held back behind a paywall. Now this perhaps may not seem significant to you, but, but it, it, it says something about our society on a deep and fundamental level. It's truly a line that must be dissected and nurtured. Would you like to go large for 60p? You see, the, the, the atonement to largeness, the attainment of greater sustenance, it is held back by a ransom of 60 pence. For what is money other than a complicated systems of ransoms? In a consumerist society, we are all being held back from achieving our true potential by the arbitrary blockage of money. A money that has no inherent value in and of itself. A, a meaningless piece of paper that dictates all of our lives. You see, it, it is a fascinating Marxist exploration of the, of the labour to commodity to profit relationship. All expressed in, in a single line, something that Marx himself could not do in his entire volume, three volume book, Das Kapital. And you see, he says this line, and Daniel, rather than saying, good sir, you are holding me back behind a, a, a complicated ransom system and I demand to be treated as a normal, functioning member of a Western society, he simply says, sure. We're, um, we're off to a swimming start. <laughs> am, I, am I beautiful yet? <laughs> And then, Paul filmed his scene. There is no footage of this, but, thanks to sophisticated computer graphicking technology, we have been able to accurately reconstruct this event. Hey Paul, uh, it's me, Simon Bird. We need you to do this, the scene now. Yes, okay, uh, I, okay Mr. Simon Bird, I will now go and do the thing. Oh, that, that's, that's really good. A uh, lights, camera, action! I uh, hello, I'm Paul, and I'm doing a thing. Woo, woo, woo. Oh, that was really good. Paul, cut. Boom. That's a wrap for me. Um, so I'm going over to do to do lunch, <laughs> to have lunch. Um, and then I guess I'm off. Fantastic.
that's the day. It's weird to think that such a large milestone, or at least what I hope was a large milestone, is now firmly in place. The mental rehearsals are done, and now, so is the performance. I suppose moments like this happen every day. As I look out the window of this little metal box, it's hard to see the buildings going by as anything but buildings. But of course, in every one of them, another little drama is playing out. Behind every window is another soul, with their troubles and their joys. I'll never know most of them, but they're there all the same. I suppose in life, we're all extras in everyone else's story. People can walk by and for a brief moment our stories will intersect, but then we part and both go on with our lives. Maybe if we stop for a while to consider that, we'd be a little more willing to smile and talk to a stranger, to break down the walls of silence and indignation that so often separate us from each other, to, to maybe even... Oh my god, this train is going so slow! And one can also view, perhaps, that this is a fast food restaurant. A fast food, only a product of a Western society, of a capitalist society, obsessed with getting here and getting there as fast as possible. We do not no longer wish to take time to appreciate a meal, we simply want our food to be there as fast as possible. A similar issue expressed in Andy Warhol's art in the, uh, the arbitrary commodification of our society. He uh, expressed this, of course, famously in giant statues of a hamburger, a hamburger that is eaten by Mr. Daniel Bagnold. Perhaps that very question was going through Andy Warhol's mind as he looked up at this statue. He looked up at it, I can imagine this now. He looked up and he said, would I like to go large for 60p? Would I like, I like to go to large for 60 p Well, that's the end of today. Uh, overall, it's been really fun. I, I've really enjoyed it. Uh, everyone was really nice. Uh, you're really friendly. And, and it, it just feels like I've reached a, you know, a good milestone with, you know, working on my first feature film, and especially when it's with someone, you know, I'm, I'm such a fan of. Yeah. So, um, so yeah, that, that's, um, that's that. That's the end of the vlog. Um, if you have any ideas how to end this vlog, please phone this number. I've been trying. It's, it's my fifth take now. I have no idea how to end this. Would I like to go large for 60 <laughs>